some artists work with paint and canvas. Others work with clay, stone, or steel. I work with human bodies. Not cadavers, but our digital cells. The zeros and ones that result from having our bodies digitized by MRI and CT scanners. For me, this material offers us a fascinating preview of just where we may be headed as we delve deeper and deeper into the interface between human identity and machine-created data. I started working with digitized bodies because of something I read by an artificial intelligence expert. Hans Moravik posited that in order for us to survive, we would need to download our consciousness to the datascape. This post-human notion made me anxious as to our fate. If indeed we could download our consciousness to the datascape, what would happen to the physical bodies left behind? Or, more worryingly, what kind of consciousness would we have if it had no body? The first digitized body I worked with was the visible human. For the visible human, Joseph Paul Jernigan, a convicted murderer, donated his body to medical science. His corpse was frozen, sliced, photographed, and uploaded to the internet. This was a medical project, but it fascinated me conceptually. For here, the body was literally transformed to data. Because his body was sliced so finely, the physical body was reduced to mush. Time and place no longer matter to the digitized body, only connections and transfer rates. So at a very different time and a very different place for where he'd been uploaded, I downloaded the scans and worked with them to resurrect him. I screen printed the images onto sheets of clear acrylic and stacked them, mimicking the slicing of his corpse, and titled the work, I Know You Inside Out. The next digitized bodies I work with were those that I know and love best. My mum, my dad, my sister, and myself. I arranged for us all to be MRI scanned in order to make a contemporary family portrait. <laughs> <laughs> one by one, we went into the magnetic coil, and the machine sliced us into more orderly cross-sections of bodies. But this time, beloved bodies. Data became future relics, zeros and ones to cherish and covet. Family Portrait, and I know you inside out, were concerned with how to get the body into the datascape. I wanted to understand the processes necessary to digitize the body and to expose what might be lost in that translation. In 2007, I was told about some open source radiology software that as an artist I could download and work with on my Mac. Plus, there was a database of free CT scans. I'd come to realize the limitations of my MRI data. It was slow to acquire and couldn't be reformatted. CT, however, is high resolution and is post-processed, therefore can be endlessly sliced and re-sliced. Plus, in the CT database, I found a full body scan of a woman. Melanix has since become my muse an endless source of inspiration. Melanix is an anonymized CT dataset. She is more or less my age, more or less my size. She even has the indentation of a ring on her left hand, like mine. I identified with Melanix as a, as a stand-in, a double for myself. I worked with her to create work such as Dervishes and Heart and Womb Axis. In making these works, I recognized the performative nature of her data. With a click of a mouse or sweep of a finger, she would flip, twirl, deflesh, reflesh. Melanix could be customized to suggest meaning from the inside out. I therefore decided to allow real embodied experience from the real world to enter the virtual world, to allow embodied experience to give form and shape to Melanix. Protest was inspired by the story of an illegal immigrant who disemboweled himself in protest to his imminent deportation. Made of hundreds of sheets of card, a CT scan is printed on the top side. On the underside, the UK Immigration Act is stained red. The intestines are shredded. Orisha was inspired by a ritualistic condomblé dance that climaxes with a chosen one receiving ancestral spirit. Here, Melanix becomes a kind of presentation platform, a space in which to test out shifting ideas and personas. In 2011, I moved to Luanda in Angola, sub-Saharan Africa. Before moving to Luanda, I hadn't really questioned my access to digitized bodies, 
They were part of my reality, part of my life. I think most of us here are familiar with scanning, have been scanned, or know someone who's been scanned. In Angola, however, this is not the case. There are very few scanners, and those that do exist are reserved for the very rich and expatriates. Opening up my computer and playing with Melanix brought on a whole new meaning. The digitized body signified a privileged first world body, and she was lost in a dark world she did not understand, and they did not understand her. I returned, therefore, to how Melanix first appears in the software, a digitized body floating in a black vacuum. I created a series of works called Confusion, placing Melanix in various states of transparency into the oxymorons and paradoxes that occur at the porous boundary of the real and the virtual, the first and the third world. In Confusion, liquids pour out of Melanix in grief. She is suspended, numb from pain, by a chain of epidural feeds. A mosquito sucks blood from her jugular vein, or she is hollowed out in order to float. But Melanix is virtual. She has no liquids to pour. She feels no pain. She is bloodless, airless. She is a privileged settler white woman in sub-Saharan Africa. Impossibly, she tries to hide the naked whiteness of her skin with a cloak of appropriated African hair weaves. Or she is herded by her bride price of 10 cows, her prefix value, limiting and steering her future. I first started working with CT and MRI scans when I was 22. I was young, fit and healthy, and fortunate to have a similarly fit and healthy family. But as I and my loved ones age, I'm increasingly confronted with a more common range people have with the MRI and CT scan, that of fear, confusion, and helplessness. At the age of 59, my mother complained that she felt strange, that something was not quite right. The first diagnosis was Parkinson's disease. Not believing the diagnosis and thinking it rather a clash of medication, I went with her to her next doctor's appointment. The doctor listened to my concerns politely and agreed to stop the medication. He then announced the good news, there was nothing on the MRI scans that had been done, everything looked normal, but he'd like to arrange a special scan to fully rule out anything serious. As I left the room, he passed me a small piece of paper. Later, when I opened it, I read the words, Lewy body dementia. Before long, the special scans confirmed the scribbled diagnosis. A couple of years later, my mom asked me what my family was like. Was I married? Did I have any children? By now, I had read every book. I had been through every website. But no doctor, no book, no website have prepared me to know how to react when you realize your mother has forgotten you. In my studio practice, I became obsessed with drawing dots, finding pixels, voxels in data, highlighting them randomly with fluorescent pens. And one day, by accident, I spilt water on these drawings. Seeing the black dots leak from their previously highlighted boundaries resonated profoundly with me and I finally found a way I could make a piece of work that addressed my emotions around my mother's illness. Seeing Mum's colorful DAT scans made me angry. How could those beautiful, colorful scans show my mother's disease and not show me? How could I not be in her brain anymore? So I printed out an enlarged MRI scan of my mother's brain, drenched my body in water, and laid on the print in order to smudge the ink, imprint myself on her brain, so that later I could highlight it, just as the eye flew playing one, two, three, had highlighted my mum's dopamine transporters. Before long, mum's invisible illness became more visible. She had trouble walking straight, trouble eating. In public, I noticed people staring at mum, looking away nervously if I caught them. Then the doctor told us there was nothing more that could be done he couldn't increase the medication anymore, and we should turn to more soft therapies, like yoga and massage. Fired by the pride and love I have for my mother, I embarked on a new series called Tagged, where Melanix would do yoga. She would fold, bend, 
open and stretched to show her magnificent, spectacular interior. She would not hide her disease, she would display it and demand that everyone stop and admire the majesty and the dignity of her grace, the beauty of love and compassion that progressive illness inspires. In blue glow, Melenic stretches high to face her own reflection, stony grayscale to the outside world, highly colored to her own reflection. In forward fold, she folds open at the waist to reveal a complex and glittering interior. In stretch, she is etched from copper sheets. She stretches wide to reveal a fluorescent green underbelly. Last November, six and a half years after her initial diagnosis, my mother died. Since losing her, I have returned to stretch and printed as a traditional copper etching on paper. Half the scans face the other half, for this is where she is to me now, so close my eyes can't focus. Especially in the morning, I awake and she is there, floating above me. The work is called Half of Me Will Always Be You. Just as a blank canvas to a painter, the medical data set is for me an endlessly rich space for inquiry and discovery. It allows me not only to think around the complexities of digitization on our society, bodies and minds, but also about my most intimate and embodied relationships. Thank you.